Hello everybody. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what's that old boy doing with that pile of junk and scrap? Well, all will be explained in a minute. Um, it's mostly rubbish. As you can see, there's bits of old plug tops, bits of old Meccano, bits of tin metal, pieces off the front of a fire guard, wire fire guard, safety cover. There's little scraps of wood there. There's even some gas pipe and, and some Meccano wheels and God knows what in there. But if you're wondering what it's for, I'm going to show you the answer now. You still there? Well, this is the answer. I'll say one thing. Whirly gigs. All the junk that I showed you just now is being used to make these whirly gigs. Now this is the simplest one. As you can see it's just a horse and he bobs up and down but it's quite pleasurable to watch. I've had to use a fan. If you can hear a noise whirring away in the background that's the fan because there's no wind outside at the moment so and it's easier to do it in the workshop anyway. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to show you this one, then I'm going to show a couple of other ones that others I've made, and then I'm going to go back to show the pile of scrap and what each part's used for. This is my seesaw whirly gig. Again, it's all made from junk. There's nothing on there that's cost money. It's all stuff that's been thrown away either by myself or friends or whatever. Um, it's, it's quite a nice thing to watch. People do seem to enjoy them. and um, It's simple to make, and I'm going to show you all the ins and outs of making them in a later video. Whirly gig number three, this is the blacksmith. Uh, he's quite a simple one again, he's bashing his hammer on his anvil and he's got a horseshoe on the end of a pair of pliers which, which does lift up occasionally off the anvil. Again it's fairly simple to make and again it costs nothing, it's only made from recycled junk. This is my German Shepherd whirly gig. Uh, as you can see it's got a, a, a black police dog chasing a burglar with a police van on the end. This one is a bit more complicated to make because it's got two movements so you need a double crank which is quite difficult to make. Um, you just have to experiment and fiddle around. I will go into detail on these whirly gigs in later videos. I plan to make a series of videos showing all of the different aspects of whirly gig making. Um, one on making the fans, one on the poles and the way it's fitted, the whirly gigs fitted on the pole, uh, the whirly gig itself and the characters to give you some hints. Most of the stuff is, is trial and error, you have to fiddle about with it, but it's quite good fun to do and, and therapeutic and it's something you can do in the winter when it's wet and cold outside, you can sit in your workshop and fiddle about with them for hours. Next, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stop the camera for a moment and move the whirly gigs and go back to the tray of junk and just explain what some of the parts are used for. Right, back to the tray of junk again. Now there's bits of wood there, like these, obviously they're they're used for various supports and things. That's a bit of beach. That's off an old uh, Louvoir door from the from the bedroom that I threw out. And I kept these because they're quite useful. Got loads of those. So that's one thing. Then you've got uh, some old rods. This is an old rod out of a a printer I broke up. There's usually quite a few useful rods, and they're often stainless steel and quite hard, but they're useful for whirly gigs. You've got bits of wire like this, uh, off a, again this is off a, I think this came off a bit of a barbecue tray or something that somebody threw out and I thought that'll make some nice rods, so that's another thing. This is a um, a piece off an old, um, I think it was a grill pan, part of a grill pan, but that comes in handy because it happens to be the right size for some of the things you want. There's some gas pipe in here, and uh, you'll think, what on earth that for? Well actually, if you cut it into short lengths you can use it as bearings and supports and spaces and all sorts of things so it comes in handy. There's a bit of wood there I used that's just a bit of an old elm tree from the hedge and I made a support for my woodpecker whirly gig which I can't show at the moment because it's outside and it's um it's not windy so it's not working. There's um some old Meccano obviously supports and various things. There's bit various bits of wood um this is a bit of elm, re-soaked elm, somebody threw it in the skip and I retrieved it. I used that to make the hub for the propellers that drive the whirly gigs, anything like that. You can see already marked that out, ready to be cut. I've got some wire, just garden wire, which is again used for linkages and things. There's some um, bicycle, bicycle spokes, they're handy for the connecting rods because they're quite hard, they don't bend easily. Um, 
some, some Meccano wheels, which I've drilled holes in. They're handy for putting on the propellers um, to connect them to the hubs, but, but I will go into those later on. And there's obviously some sheets of metal. The, the bottom part of it is an old, is old um, shelves from racking, just throw, throw away racking. It's all gone rusty, but it's ideal. I make the propeller blades out of those. There's a piece there I've already cut out. It's already marked to be cut out, and I'll show you how to do that a bit later in another video on propellers. Um, from the 13 amp plug top, you're thinking, what on earth does he want with a 13 amp plug top? Surely there's no possible use for that. Well, actually, yes, there is, and I'm going to show you they're very useful, especially the old ones, not the modern ones with insulated fins. I'll move that out of the way. And I'll move my next little tray of goodies in. Okay, now there you will see why I use old plug tops. These are the pins taken out of the old fashioned plug tops. It has to be the ones with the hole through and the clamp screw rather than the old MK ones like I just showed you actually, which has a screw top terminal which screws on and they're no good for this particular application. Now they have two uses in Whirly Gigs that I found. One, they make excellent bearings because if you take a rod like this one that I've made, um, it just so happens that it fits through that hole and per almost perfectly with free movement and it acts as a bearing. So what I do, I drill a hole into the, the support for the whirly gig, hammer that the pin in, leave that sticking out and I can use that as a bearing for my whirly gig. You don't have to have the screw in, you can take that out. If you take it out, you've got a convenient oiling point on the top to keep the thing working well. So that's one use for the plug tops. The other use for them is, if you cut the pin off the bottom, like this, you can make little collars, which you can put on these rods. They fit perfectly on the rod again. If not, you can bore them out a little bit using a twist drill. But you can screw those onto the end of the rod, like that, and then tighten them up and use them as collars as, as I'll show you again how to do that in my other main videos when I'm showing you the, uh, the whirly gigs and the other thing I use sometimes are these plastic terminal blocks this is an old bake like one but it doesn't matter these are plastic ones uh, those are 30 amp I think they're very useful if you break them open or cut the plastic off you end up with something like this the in innards of it and they're very handy for joining two rods together because you've got quite a largish hole down the centre and two screws so you can put one rod in one end and one in the other, tighten it up and it, it creates a joint for, for two rods which can be handy. So I find those very useful for various things. Uh, the other thing I'm just going to show you before we go on, just a brief look at some of the characters. These are some of the characters I've made up. Um, to use on the whirly gigs. These are some spare ones. I always make spare ones. It's handy to have a few there because they don't last all that long outside in the weather no matter how much you protect them. These are the these are the, the children uh, from a seesaw one. That's the woodpecker one. Um, I, I say he's outside at the moment. Uh, that's a spare one. And this is a, another whirly gig I've made. You can see they're fairly simple to cut out and again I'm going to show you in another video how to do that and they're just painted with acrylics. So that's that out of the way. And the other ones. These are some of the other characters that go on whirly gigs. This is one I made. Most people will recognise this as sh sh characters from Shaun the Sheep. And I drew these out and just painted them with acrylics and varnished them. Um, it's a more complicated whirly gig. Uh, I have made them. Um, but they've got three movements on and I do find it quite difficult making a rod up and fitting it in with three different movements. But it's quite entertaining when it's done. Anyway, I think that's all for now for the introduction. Um, the next step, uh, the next video, will be about making the propellers to drive the whirly gig. So I'll do it in stages because it, although it's simple to make, they're very simple to make, it, it can be quite complicated doing it all in one. So the next video will be about propellers. Okay, bye for now.